Tired of spreadsheets looking dull and uninspired? The data entry forms look something like this. After this video, you'll be able to turn your forms into something like this. And yes, this is still Excel. With the techniques in this video, you'll be able to build input forms like this, dashboards like this, menus like this, and much more. Oh, and stick around to the end because I'll show you how to build a fully functional menu system with only 11 lines of VBA code. I'll teach you how to use the power of merged shapes to create complex, polished designs that transform your workbook into a stunning application-style environment. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. If I make a curved shape like this and fill it white, I can't type in it. Or if I give it no fill, it doesn't really look like it's an input box. Or I colour the cell underneath, but those ugly corners just sort of ruin everything. So how do we fix this? How do we produce something like this? Let me show you. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is just fill in all the cells with a nice grey colour. So I'm just going to pick this dark grey. I've got a few colours that I'll be using throughout this video. I'll put the codes on the screen as I'm using them. Then we're going to just set up our font. So the font that we're going to use for this is just going to be Sego UI. And I'm going to set the font color of everything to white. And I'm just going to fix up the column sizes here. And we're going to set up our row heights. So we're going to make a shipping form here. So we're just going to call that shipping. And I'm going to set that to a nice big 18 font. And then we're going to put in a few icons. So we're going to be doing a name. So we just come up here to insert, go to icons, get a person icon. Just going to grab that one there. Grab another one, search for phone, that one. And last one, we're just going to grab a map pin for the location. So we want to set all these to white. And I already have these numbers in mind. So we'll just set these to 0.93. If you have Office 365, you can do place in cell. Just make sure the top left of that shape is where you want it. So we just want those in the B columns in rows 4, 6, and 8. So next we're going to create these cells just as the background color for what we want our input fields to be. It's going to be our phone number. This is going to be the selection for the phone. This is going to be our address field. And we're going to have city, state, and the zip code. Now you see we've got these these sort of square corners. So how do we fix that? So we're going to create a shape. We're going to create this rounded rectangle shape. If you hold Alt while you're drawing this shape, it will snap to the corners of that cell. Now we can just sort of adjust this. If you want like a really nice rounded like that, then we can do that. Otherwise, we'll just make it a bit more square. And I'm just going to copy this for all the other cells. And so now we've got all those fields filled in. We're just going to select all these shapes, so just hold control and just click on all those shapes. Just going to remove the outline. We'll leave the fill at the moment just as this blue colour. It'll just make it a bit easier to work with when we do the next steps. Now this is where the actual magic comes in. So we're going to come over to PowerPoint. So we're going to open up a PowerPoint presentation, blank presentation. And we're using PowerPoint because it has this feature called Merge Shapes, something that Excel doesn't have. The reason we draw these boxes in Excel first is so that we get the size of the actual field that we're trying to create. So if we just copy that shape, so right click copy or just control C and we come over to PowerPoint, just paste that shape in, bring that up here. Then we just grab another shape here and create it the exact same size. So you should see that it snaps to the edges. So you wanna make sure that it's snapped to the edges of those. And we want that new shape to be at the back. So we just send that to the back. Then we remove the outline and then hold control to select both shapes. So if I open up the selection pane here, you'll see that we've got the two rectangles selected. Just select them from here if it's a bit easier. Just make sure you select the back one first and then the top one, the round cornered one. And then all you need to do from there is just go to merge shapes up here in the shape format tab and go subtract. And you see it creates these four little corners. Now if we copy that and come back to Excel and paste that in, if you hold Alt while you're pasting it in, then you can make sure that it snaps to that cell. And then all we need to do is change the shape fill of that color to the exact same color of the background here. So we just set that to this dark gray and then this shape here, we set that to no fill. And now you can see we've got an input field where we can actually type some information. This is going to be our name field. Now I've actually built a macro that does all those steps for me automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
create those shapes. If you'd like access to that macro or would like a tutorial on that macro, leave a comment down below so that I know that you're interested and I can make a video on how to make this an automatic process. And last thing we're gonna do is create some buttons at the bottom. I'm gonna give them very rounded corners. Give them a blue color. This one I give same color as the background. I make them semi bold, make sure the text is centered. So you can see we can build out a nice form like this. These nice curved looking shapes for your input fields. Obviously you wanna make sure that these fields are merged, left aligned and indented. Now say you want this as a drop down box, but you find the data validation to be a bit ugly and uninspired. If you have something like this, it just doesn't sort of fit with the look and feel of this form. So there is actually a way of creating custom drop-down boxes. Again, if you'd like to see this, just leave a comment down below so that I know that you're interested. We would just make a simple arrow shape, make this the same color as that background text, and just create a separation line here. So with the same color as our background, like that. And essentially what you do, you just have this as a button that we can trigger a macro to make custom drop down boxes. And what if you want to create a really simple menu system like this to tab between a bunch of different columns. So you can see here, these are changing columns as we select different sections. But how do we make these buttons really nice and easy so that we can select these every time you make a click. So to do this, we need to first create the size shape that we need. I'm just gonna get rid of, say this settings one here. You can see that essentially what this is, is it's a hollow shape. You can see that the text and the icon are actually kind of see-through. And all we do is overlay that. And on this, we have some conditional formatting. If the, the address of this cell is equal to the address that's located in A1. Now you can see here that I've got A column hidden. So what's in this A column? And here you can see we've got the cell of the current selected menu item. And to the left of this, you've got all the columns relating to each of these menu icons or shapes. So this is just values that I've put in next to each of these items. These can be changed and it instantly will change which columns show for that tab. So you can see now we go AF to AZ. So you can see AF to AZ. Here you can even have overlapping columns. So you can go custom is T to AB. So you can see T to AB is now changed there. So we'll rehide this column. And now how do we create these shapes? So remember, this is kind of what we're looking for. We're just gonna create the plain rectangle. So we're just gonna put a rectangle in there. And again, we're just gonna make sure that it has no outline. And then we're gonna come over to PowerPoint, paste that shape in here. And then we're gonna get the icon that we want. So for this, it's gonna be settings. So we're just gonna get a cog. And for the text, if you just use a standard text box, it's not gonna work. You need to build it as word art. I'm just gonna create settings like that, pick our font. And then we're going to place that over the top of our shape here. Get our font so that it's looking about right. We'll go 18. Right, align that to the middle. We want to right align the text. We want to just make it bold so that it stands out a bit more. It's going to bring that in from the side a little bit. Then I'm going to vertically align that into the middle. Now for our cog icon here, we just place that in top left, resize that to the size we want. And you'll notice if we select this background shape and select that icon and you just do subtract like that, it just blanks out the whole square. So what we need to do is actually click on this icon first, right click and go convert to shape. That will convert that to potentially a number of, of shapes, depending on the type of shape it is. If it's a compound shape with multiple pieces, then it will make multiple shapes. Then we can select the background, control click on that shape and control click on our text. And we just go to subtract. And now you can see we've got this nice hollow shape, which we can take back and paste back into Excel. And then you need to do is make sure that that's the same color as that background. And so here's what I was teasing at earlier. We have just 11 lines of code to create this menu system. So on the sheet here, so this is sheet three. You can see here, we've got sheet three. We just do a selection change. So this is just a pre-generated line of code. So you just select the worksheet here and selection change from the second column 
there. You just do if count large is greater than one, then exit sub. So all this does is just make sure that if we select all the fields or we select multiple fields like this, which is something that we'll do when we're using our application, then it won't cause any errors. And then we just do if not intersect range B3, B6 and B8. So that's just these B3, four, five, six, and eight is intersected with the target is nothing. So this just checks is not nothing. There's a double negative. So this just checks that if it is intersecting, then we just run this change tab sub. All this does is accept the target as the range. These are hard coded our cells. There's everything encompassed in these here. So we hide every other column. We set the value of A1 to the target address. This is gonna be used for a conditional formatting. And then in here, we grab this. So if we just run this, you can see that that target offset value is the column to the left of the current button and that holds that ls column set there so we set the entire column hidden for those to false and then we just select the first cell in that range and finally we just have a click function all that does is gets the shape that you're clicking and selects the top cell so we click this shape and that just selects this current cell that it's sitting in, so B5. So now for our new button for our settings, all we have to do is right click on that, go to assign macro, set that to click tab, we click that new shape, we can see that that automatically just works as a new tab. So using these tricks with merge shapes in PowerPoint, you can create these type of input fields, we can create these corners for these menu system here, and build this very simple menu here, we create a nice dashboard looks something like this where you've got sort of holes in each of these shapes and here we've got a shape just sitting behind this you can have an input form with these like really curved fields like this or obviously the one that we've just built and that's it if you've made it to this point in the video and you've enjoyed the content then all i ask is you just hit that like and subscribe button turn on the notification bell to get alerts when i post new content leave a comment down below if you've learned anything new or how you could apply this to your own applications thanks very much for watching this is your vb tutor signing out